unpack in that, in that video. There's a lot to, to talk about and to discuss. And I hope that as you are on this journey of faith and exploring what it means to follow Jesus, to love Jesus, to, obedient, to be obedient to him, that you would journey with us. And so if you would like to join our Alpha course, just text the word Alpha to that number 647. 9310015 and you'll get a, a link so you can sign up for that. Alpha starts on the 19th of September, which is not this Thursday, but the following Thursday after that. Uh, and there's childcare as well. And so if you have young kids and you're thinking, well, how can I come to this? I have my kids. Well, we have childcare for, for your kids and there's a free dinner that's included as well. It's a, it's a 10 week course where we journey together. And this is one of the videos that you'll watch and an opportunity to unpack that and discuss that. But as you think about faith and as you think about the question, how can I have faith? You might be here and you might be going through different trials and tribulations and difficulties. And as Nikki Gumbel, who is the main person that was sharing in the video, as he said, God wants to be close to us. And just as he told the story of his grandson wanting love and affection and the closeness of his parents in times when maybe he wasn't even going through hard uh, trials, but he wanted to be close to his parents. I want to give you hope from the word of God in this one verse. In Psalm 34, it says this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And if you're here today and your heart is broken, if you're here today and you've gone through some very difficult trials, if you're here today and you've come in, in whatever state and whatever situation and circumstance that you might be going through family turmoil, through financial difficulty, or through a health crisis, I want you to know the promise of God's word that says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He wants to be close to you today. The invitation is open, as was shared in the video. The invitation is open for you and the invitation is open for me. The invitation is open for everyone to come to Jesus. He wants to be close to the brokenhearted. What are you facing today? What is the struggle you're facing today? And what is the difficulty you're facing today? It is not too hard for Jesus. And the beauty of what God promised to, promises to us, if we ask this question, how can I have faith the first step is found in God's word. As was shared, the word of God has so many beautiful promises of God. One that I just read to you from the book of Psalms. There's so many other promises of, from God that inspires and creates and induces us with faith so that we can believe the Lord. We can believe that Jesus is walking with us. One verse says that he is our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble. Another beautiful promise says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Jesus gives us the promises of, of his word, and he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In a world filled with turmoil and heartbreak and a, a world filled with darkness and pain and suffering, and we see that all around us, we can see the light of the world, the glimmer of hope, the, the hope of Jesus as he knocks on that door wanting to come into us and to have fellowship with us and to know us and to commune with us and to love us like no one has ever loved us before. That's the promise of his word that he gives to us. This verse was shared in the video. It says, so faith comes by hearing that is hearing the good news about Jesus. As we hear and understand the good news of Jesus, it inspires faith into our hearts. It helps us to believe on him. And we might think, well, I'm not really sure. How can I have faith? Well, you can have faith in the person of Jesus. Now, you might think Jesus lived about 2,000 years ago. How in the world am I supposed to have faith in this man, Jesus? Well, another a video in this series, it's called Who is Jesus? It's actually the, the, one of the early videos in this series of Alpha. 
And it talks about the authenticity of the person of Jesus, how there's historical records about the existence of Jesus, how there are Jewish writers and non-Jewish writers that have testified who Jesus is and that he lived in this world and some of the amazing and wonderful things that he accomplished. And we also can know the person of Jesus because he lived such a wonderful and radical life that was so countercultural for his day. Because he went to the disenfranchised, he went to the outcasts, he went to the people that weren't part of the, of, of the community. He went to those that were on the, on the fringes because he wanted to open his heart to each and every one. And wherever you might be in your journey of faith and your exploration of spirituality, I want to let you know that Jesus' arms are open to you. That you too can know the person of Jesus. You too, as you read the word of God and as you hear about the miracles that he did and the signs and the wonders that he did, the love that he showed, the compassion that he had, the empathy that he, exp- that he displayed to other people, he wants to do the same for you as well. Friends, you can know the person of Jesus in all of his fullness, in all of his authenticity, in all of his grace, in all of his love, in all of what he wants to give to you. Jesus is an exceptional figure in history. And even though he lived literally in this world 2,000 years ago, the word of God says that he is alive forevermore. And you and I can have the privilege of knowing him. In John chapter 1, it says, I love this verse. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him. If you take that step to believe in Jesus and accept him, do you know what the promise is? He gave the right to become children of God. He, he welcomes us into his family. He opens his arms towards us and says, you are part of my family. If we believe in him, if we accept him, he gives us the right, the privilege to be called the sons and daughters of the living God. That's the promise of the word of God for you and for me, that we can experience the love of God in all of its fullness. We can know the love of the heavenly father, that he loves us. We can know the person of Jesus Christ. And not just the person of Jesus Christ, but the work of Jesus Christ. And maybe someone invited you to come to to church this morning and to experience this Sunday morning, and maybe you can ask them, maybe while you're having your barbecue, ask them, what has Jesus done for you? That's a good question. What has Jesus done for you? See, for many of us that are in the room today, We are here because Jesus has done something in our lives that has changed us and touched us radically. That we've experienced, even as Nikki shared in the video, we've experienced some type of change and transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus has come into our lives. See, by accepting Jesus and becoming a child of God, the rest of our story, the rest of our lives, the rest of our trajectory is completely and utterly changed because now we are on a trajectory of love, a trajectory of knowing Jesus. And it's not just limited by this world and by the, the 50, 60, 70, 80 years that we are here in this world, but it is a trajectory towards eternity that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And one day when this life is over, we will be with him for all eternity to experience his love over and over and over again. See, the work of Jesus is something that radically changes our lives. There was a person that was referred to a lot in this video. They called him St. Paul. Now he is known to us as St. Paul. But before he wasn't St. Paul, he was just a man named Saul who was actually against the Christian faith, was actually against Jesus. And one day, while he was actually actively seeking to persecute Christians and to do them harm, Jesus came and radically changed his life. He had a vision of Jesus, and he saw Jesus. And when he saw Jesus in his fullness and in his love and in his kindness and in his compassion, Saul was touched by Jesus. And he could no longer live the same way. He could no longer persecute Christians. He could no longer do things against the Christian faith. But he decided that instead of being a persecutor of the Christian faith, he was going to be a propagator of the Christian faith. 
He was going to take that love and grace that he experienced in Jesus, and he was going to share that with others. And so he says here in one of his letters in Romans chapter 1, it says, For I am not ashamed of this good news, the good news of Jesus, the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. Paul, who at one time, or Saul, who at one time was against the Christian faith, now he said, as St. Paul, I am not ashamed of the good news of Jesus. It has touched me. It has changed me. It has transformed me. And I want to encourage you, particularly if you're a guest here and somebody invited you to come, that you ask that person, what did Jesus do for you? And if you came here and you weren't invited by anyone, come and ask me after the service. Daniel, what did Jesus do for you? I can't say that right now, because if I did, you guys are going to miss out on the barbecue. <laughs> so better catch me during the barbecue. Talk to one of our staff as well. You saw Pastor Allison and Pastor Justin here on the stage as they blessed and prayed for the children. You saw Pastor Leonor here as she prayed and blessed uh, the parents. You saw Pastor Keisha as she was leading us in worship. Talk to one of us. Talk to one of our volunteers. Talk to the person that's helping you squeeze the ketchup bottle. And ask them, what has Jesus done for you? How can I have faith? Look what Paul says here in Philippians. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul had so many accomplishments in this world. He was able to do so much in this world. Paul did amazing, Paul, in, in the eyes of the world, he accomplished a lot. But he says here, everything that I've accomplished is worthless in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Friends, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you into a journey of faith. I want to inv invite you to sign up for our Alpha course and start a journey of faith. Or maybe you're here today and something in this video just moved you and tugged your heart and you know you need to respond today. Our prayer team will be here at the front and we would love to be able to pray for you at the end of this service. We would love to be able to journey with you so that you might know Jesus in all that he gives to us. One of the most beautiful things that Jesus gives to us, and I'll just close with this, is that he gives us a hope that goes beyond this life. Maybe you're here, and as I read that first verse, you're brokenhearted. You're going through some pain. You're going through some difficulty. You're going through some hardship. I want to tell you that Jesus offers us hope. In fact, the word of God says that Jesus is our living hope that he is our hope that goes beyond this life. And in, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our difficulty, he can give us that hope. I want to invite the worship team to come now as we get ready to sing this one final song. But there was a, a Christian, uh, Christian artist uh, who's pretty famous in the Christian world of, of Christian musicians. His name is Jeremy Camp. And he, um, in his er very early on in his life, he got married to a young woman who had cancer. And he was journeying with her through this cancer diagnosis. And unfortunately, she ended up passing away. And after she passed away, and this was so traumatic and difficult and hard for him, he wrote a song called, I Still Believe. And in the midst of that pain and in the midst of that sorrow, he was still able to say, I have faith. And I still believe in your word and in your promises. And I know that's not easy, and I know that's not hard. And, and many of us here, you've gone through cancer diagnosis, or you lost a loved one, you've, you've gone through some difficulty, and you've gone through some hardship, and my heart goes out to you. And I want to bless you with the promise of God that he's close to the brokenhearted. But he is also a person that gives us hope so that we can still believe on him, that we can still have faith in the midst of the most difficult hardship. We can still put our hope in Jesus when the world is going against us. When life is against us, we can still have hope 
in Jesus. Can I invite you to stand? And as we sing this, this song, can I ask you to, to take a step of faith, to confess the promises of God, to confess the hope of Jesus, so that we might know that he is our living hope in whatever situation we find ourselves today.